What is going on guys? In this video, I wanna to talk to you about something called technical debt, technical debt. And technical debt isn't something, you know, it's not monetary, it's not something that you need to go back to the bank and pay something with interest on it, uh, but it, it's something that's more involved in terms of software, in terms of systems, building new features, maintaining systems, et cetera, et cetera. So first of all, what is technical debt? What does this even mean? You can think of technical debt as the artifacts of shortcuts that we take in order to, in some cases, develop a feature on time. So let me give you an example because that's not like very clear in terms of what that means. So say we're, we're kind of coming out with a new product. I'm a, I'm a developer and I'm kind of want to build this new product. And we want to prototype this thing, right? We want to build something really scrappy, get it out the door very quickly, get it to some of our customers maybe a select group of beta testers and see if this thing is going to take off and then we're going to say okay once we figure that out we're going to step back and then productionize it things like adding alarms add metrics add logging all that stuff very very common in a lot of companies now let's assume for a second we kind of build this product and we get it out the door and we start having customers use it and we don't end up doing all of these optimal things alarms logging all those kind of things i was leading into Technically, we've delivered the feature, right? But we've delivered that feature in a suboptimal way. Now, when it comes to maintaining this feature now, maintaining this product that we just built, in order to do so, it's gonna be very, very difficult. We're gonna to have to go back at a later point in time and address all of those shortcomings, those things that we never did that we should have done. Although from the customer perspective, this looks like everything is working perfectly. And often from the business perspective, it looks like everything is working. But from a developer perspective, we feel the pain because we know we let a system get out there that isn't manageable. We don't have insight into how it's working. We don't know if it's working healthily or not. We essentially are flying blind. It's the equivalent of flying blind. So this is just one example of the application of technical debt and why it can kind of come back to bite you because you kind of get something out the door, but you have this crushing debt that's going to be weighing on you over time. And unless you address it immediately, there's just going to be more and more debt that gets stacked on top of you until one day the system becomes unmanageable and then you got to start from scratch. So that's what technical debt is. Again, that's just one example. There's a whole bunch of other examples, like, but essentially it's whenever you do something in a suboptimal way that produces artifacts that you need to address later in order to have a stable system or a stable feature. That is the essence of technical debt. So there's some very obvious reasons like why is this a problem and I've already kind of alluded to this. Well, it's a problem because, you know, we need to go back and retroactively spend time fixing these things. And a lot of the time it's a different person, especially in large organizations. It may not be the person that originally built it. So there's a lot of context that needs to be gained to go back and fix it. It takes a lot longer to add features or make modifications to the system. So that's what technical debt is. Now, before I get into things like how to fix it and how to deal with it and all that stuff, I think we need to take a step back and kind of realize like how do you prevent prevent it from happening in the first place. Because if you can prevent something from happening, then you never have to deal with it later, right? So we might as well put a little bit of extra effort to prevent it. And I think there, there's two main reasons, two things that you could do to prevent technical debt. The first one is education. It's to realize that this is a thing and that technical debt is a big problem for software developers. We spend way too much time going back into code that someone has written previously, trying to figure out what's going on and then unravel things and add new features. Or we take too many shortcuts that are gonna end up biting us later and then we need to deal with them at a, at a time where you know we don't necessarily have that much time to deal with some of these problems. So that's really the first thing, it's education. And I think the second thing is to really as a developer to have backbone and to push back against you know, product managers or businesses or whoever's asking you to kind of build a feature in a suboptimal way to meet an arbitrary timeline. Now, sometimes timelines are important. Getting to market quickly is something that, you know, you can't ignore the value of getting to market first before your competitors do. So sometimes technical debt makes sense. But in my experience personally, a majority of the time, if the developer or the engineers just push back a little bit more or pushed a little harder against whoever was requesting it, you could have gotten away with doing it the right way in the first place and never have to deal with technical debt after the fact and after you kind of already written the code. So that's like the first element here. Preventing it is all about education and pushing back on timelines when it makes sense. So those are my two biggest suggestions for prevention. 
So we talked about how to prevent it, and hopefully if you're in a good situation, you can prevent technical debt from entering the system. But all systems have some amount of technical debt. The world isn't perfect. We can't push back 100% of the time. So probably 99% of the time, you're gonna have to deal with technical debt. So how do you fix it? The first way is to allocate time to refactor and fix the problems. A lot of people don't like hearing this, but you know, if you gotta clean up the mess that you make, unfortunately. And if you take these shortcuts that lead to all these problems in the future, you got to clean it up. And unfortunately, a lot of the time that's going to go into fixing this problem that's resulted from technical debt could have been avoided from the get go by just not doing it in the first place. Now, unfortunately, this is going to take a lot of time. Dealing with technical debt is never an easy thing, especially as you accrue more and more and more and more. And this is a point that I really want to hammer home. The more technical debt that you have as a sum, the harder it gets to deal with the problem. So just a little bit of technical debt is fine. A small amount that's manageable. But as soon as it starts taking over the system, as soon as it becomes a element of the system, your technical debt is how the system works, then you really got a problem. And you need to address that quickly. Now, like I said, the one way is to refactor, make time, you know, you're gonna have to swallow the pain that goes along with that. The other way is to rebuild the system. And for a lot of folks, that is just out of the question because the amount of time that you would need to spend just to get to parity to rebuild the system is incredibly prohibitive. So it makes a lot of sense to just deal with the technical debt when the time comes, when time gets allocated with it. And I think what you'll find that if you don't end up dealing with this technical debt, you'll become so crippled in sense of the speed in which you can deliver new features or make modifications to your existing system where you, you just won't be able to move. You'll be in a deadlock essentially. So again, I, I highly encourage you to deal with your technical debt as it comes. Uh, try and prevent it, of course, from getting in in the first place. But again, if you have no choice, technical debt's already there, you got to deal with it. So hopefully this kind of illuminated technical debt uh, for a lot of folks that may have kind of had a feeling that this was a thing, but didn't know the official term of it. So there it is, technical debt. I want to know if your system has technical debt. Let me know down below in the description section of this video. I'm curious to hear about the pain that you folks feel in your systems. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps promote the channel. And as always, I will see you next time.